Hello everyone. Welcome back to part 12 of the mystery of the bevel blocks. I apologize for the uh, lack of videos lately. It's been a pretty long week, but I finally have some time to sit down and go through a bunch of these sites with you today. And I think we're just going to have to keep this as an open-ended series, guys, because Chuck over at CFAP7865 put out a video yesterday on Sogmatar and was talking about Haran. And just out of curiosity, I started looking into Haran, and sure enough, I found some bevel blocks. So, before we start the list, I want to recommend Chuck's video here. I'll put the link in the description. This is Sogmatar. This is essentially uh, an uncharted, uh, unexcavated feature out in the middle of this kind of desolate area of Turkey near Gobekli Tepe and Karan Tepe and Haran. So, and, and Ur, Ur as well, Ur of the Chaldees, Ur is close by. So, this is a very ancient site with a lot of history. And for a big old feature like this to be in the vicinity that is unexcavated and not much is known about what could be under the the set, I guess we'll call this sedimentation. This might, I mean, Chuck thinks it might be a pyramid. I think that's a compelling case because he shows some masonry down toward the bottom. And of course, whenever I hear that, I, I want to know if it's uh, bevel blocks or not. Here you go. See, this stuff's pretty grainy. It's hard to tell. These look like, you know, dry laid, somewhat finely dressed stones. And I started seeing anomalies, like maybe that's a square hole anomaly at a corner. And this stuff is just sticking out of that hillside, that giant hillside, whatever you call this, artificial or not, I don't know. But could be a lot of mysterious stuff inside of here. If you watch his video and the history, you know, I think that's pretty interesting. So check that out. Give me your feedback on that and maybe look at some of the other pictures of the features around Sogmatar. There's little uh, small round temple-like features around here that they are not bevel block, but they look similar in style to some of this other stuff we've been looking at. Uh, for example, this one has a triple motif on it, a cornice, wraps around. Very interesting, almost eerily similar to some of this other stuff we've been talking about. Haran itself has bevel blocks. I've added this to the list. We probably won't get to the site today, but you can see clearly at the bottom bevel blocks, but no bevel blocks in the upper structure, just finely dressed. The last of the bevel blocks seems to be like right here, and then the rest is all finely dressed. I still think this is all contemporary. I think it's just the way that the structure was built, and I have another picture in the album on in that post that will show you a pretty good example, a pretty uh, compelling case for that. As a matter of fact, here it is right here. See how it goes from bevel block on the right over to the left? It becomes smooth and finely dressed. Still the chunky arches and the somewhat, you know, familiar architectural styles, the cornices. Strange, it was this octagonal structure? That's interesting, right? So... We can talk more about that when we get to it on the list, but just some really interesting stuff in this area. The Sabians, the people who are attributed to these buildings, looks like the granary of Andriaki to me. Interesting stuff. You can see the, the brick additions up here to maybe repair what the original, or just uh, extend to enlarge the structure, bricks on top of the stones. But a lot going on in this area, guys. I think uh, we might be circling around on some of the same concepts and some of the same ideas. So keep an open mind on some of this stuff and uh, be willing to discuss it and debate it with the other guys because we all have a piece of the puzzle here. So let's get back to the list. And we'll kind of jump off from what we were talking about last time with uh, Elephantine Island. And this is one of the temples nearby, the island of Philae at Aswan. This was another temple that had to be saved from the rising waters of the Aswan High Dam when they constructed it. So 
I believe it's a faithful restoration. It seems like a it would it, it seems like a temple that could be, you know, understandably relocated. It seems like it's all there and the layout seems like it could have been easily mapped and repositioned and like the construction blocks are Lego, so it'd be very easy to just put this back together somewhere else if you marked all the pieces and carefully took it apart. So Obviously, we're going to see some mortar and other repair elements, blocks that don't fit. This is repair blocks or mortar smeared over, but you can see the original bevel blocks, nubs, lots of nubs and anomalous nubs. They're very weird sizes and orientations, and what were they for? Maybe attaching... Decorative elements? I don't know. Square holes also. These appear more functional. These seem like cornice attachment points. Perhaps other little architectural elements. But there's also some other square holes in the upper areas, maybe in the columns or here. But my attention was drawn to this little area up here. Some other spots maybe. But very interesting. A lot going on with these old temples. There's one. How about that hole? That's strange. Very strange. And other square cutouts at corners. Strange. Next, how about a pyramid in Greece? Now, this one, we can debate on whether or not it is a bevel block construction. There really aren't any other bevel, bevel blocks in the rest of this structure, but the edge of the sides, I'm going to say every side, it's hard to find good pictures of this, guys, but I think this corner gives it away and that these are indeed bevel blocks and you can see they have square hole anomalies at corners and then the whole structure itself is very strange polygonal and the way it's put together is very strange uh, the, there's really sometimes there's rows other times there really isn't any sense of a row there's large and small interspersed it's very haphazard right a lot of weird elements to this structure and I have some more pictures off the list it shows you the arch the entrance this is hard I'm gonna zoom in a little bit it'll probably break down but I'm gonna say these are bevel blocks this the archway blocks the way they're beveled I think that's a, that's a hallmark and again what's what's up with this weird erosion damage holes in the blocks what's that about I'm not sure if that's for attaching something that there was a, an element that was in there attached in there but you see other areas and other areas and you just start to wonder I don't know is that what if that's damage how is that caused I don't know really don't know and then like a step back you see more of this damage I really don't understand right you, you saw this at the uh, the tomb of Cyrus the Great and uh, at that wall we saw in the last episode, several walls in the, in the last episode actually, that have what appears to be damage holes in these structures. I don't, I don't know how else to describe that. And it seems to be peppered throughout all the blocks. And again, here you can see the row that just, that these huge blocks deviate from the row, but above it stays true to the row. Very impressive, however they did this. And a view from above. Some really strange shaped blocks, like this one here caught my eye. Is this an L-shaped block? That's amazing. Why would they do that? That's a, that's an incredible cut if they did that. So, a lot going on here. I don't I don't really know much of the history of this site. I think there's I think there might actually be more of these in this area, but very strange, right, guys? Very out of place it seems. And that was the Pyramid of Hellenicon. Next. This one's kind of controversial. The Arch of Augustus in Susa, Iran. And this one is just really confusing to me, guys. I want to, we can have an open debate about this one. Because, sure, yeah, this is, this should be classically Greek or Roman because of the Corinthian columns, the Corinthian capitals, the fluted columns. This is all motif-wise, traditional, and and cultural. 
to the Greeks and the Romans. But then what are all these holes about? I think we brought this up in a previous episode just for a minute, but we can dig into this a little deeper. Now, if it was for attaching statues, that could be something, right? Maybe there were statues or shelving and other little um, artistic and architectural elements that were inserted into these, or a gate, maybe. There were gate elements, but it doesn't appear to be completely symmetrical on both sides. There, there appears to be instances of mirroring, but not always. So like at the bottom, for example, you have one, one, two, 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 one, two, two, and one again. And they kind of double across all the way to the top. And then you kind of have instances where, nope, that one doesn't. And this one up here, up that doesn't. So it's not a direct mirroring. And up at the top here, what is this about? Is, is the inscription done over the holes? Does that mean that the inscription was done afterwards? It's really hard to tell what, what came first. The damage or the inscription. And notice where the holes are in relation to the blocks here. They're at the joints, at the, the corners of all these blocks. I don't know what that means or what that could imply other than that there was metal in the structure like clamps and ties or specialty clamps and ties maybe that stuck out of the wall as well where other pieces of stone would made it into for architectural, artistic elements, other columns and statuary stuff. That's all I can think of, but it's just, it's so anomalous and and even inside here, I mean, that'd be a lot of statuary stuff and artistic stuff inside. Could be plaques. We don't know. I, I really, I have no idea, but it, it just seems very anomalous and haphazardly executed. And as for the artwork at the top, we see that in a lot of other sites, like the Parthenon, and you have just these little friezes of these illustrative scenes they're, they're typical uh, cultural scenes for, uh, from the traditional Orthodox history that you know I, I really don't know what else to attribute them to. They they seem you know they they seem pretty well executed if you look at them up close, like the ones in the museum from the Parthenon. They're really well done, and the scenes they depict are, are fairly intricate scenes, and the motifs and the, and the Symbolism behind them is pretty advanced. But if we're talking about this stuff being as ancient as we say it is, that's a very weird contradiction. And again, here at Susa, this is another structure that I want to point out. So if that other structure, so beautiful as it was, with the little holes in it, if, if that's dated to when we assume it was dated, then what time period are we supposed to date this crazy structure to that also has these crazy holes in it. What are these holes about? We can we can clearly tell that the structure has been repaired or added onto with these brick elements, but these stones underneath, these are the original construction. The the exterior I don't know about the rubble fill could be, but the exterior blocks are obviously the original construction. And what's up with that damage? It's like under the form of Trajanus, the same kind of damage. Outgassing or where they've dug into the blocks to get the metal out, that's all I can think of. I really don't know how else to explain that kind of damage. Next is the Crusader Sea Castle at Sidon, Lebanon. Now I want to spend some time talking about this site, guys, because I'm kind of confused at what I'm looking at, and I see some things that are uh, kind of causing some confliction in my head. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at things that I think are reclaimed elements, but in some pictures I just found, I think they more look like original elements. You would think these are column drum segments that have been reincorporated, repurposed into this wall, perhaps, but when we look at some other pictures, that might not that might prove not to be the case. 
So in this picture that I have on the list, it's a pretty decent picture. Uh, you can see some things right away. This this is a this is all bevel block. The stuff in the foreground is not. It is finely dressed. I'm not sure if that means it is later or not, because you see other instances where perhaps they're bevel blocks. I don't know if this is mortar or not. Clearly, this top portion is either repair mortar or just mud and other sediment over time. It's very old, obviously. Here down at the bottom, I think you can see the evidence of where metal clamps used to hold these blocks together. So if nothing else, the lower portions of this structure is a connected original site, and some of this stuff on top may be repairs, additions, alterations later for other purposes, right? So let's look at some pictures off the list. I found some better quality photos. And maybe we can discuss some of these other things I'm talking about here. So some of the biggest pictures I could find on Google. And these circular elements, right? Are they column drum segments? Maybe. They're not all the same size. Some of them are even different material, different colors. And I think some have square holes in them, which would make me believe, yes, they were column drum segments at one time. Other ones appear to have like four. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit here. Others appear to have like, uh, was that four little indentations in them? I'm not sure what that's about. That appears to be the only one that has those. Looking at the wall, I see lots of square anomalies peppered throughout the structure. The bevels seem pretty even throughout the rows even throughout strange damage i see portions here that look like perhaps an arch or something originally was here or maybe that's just the way it looks because it's damaged hard to tell you see the pieces sticking out of the top they're very finely machined it'd be very it's a very odd execution to use them in the original construction i know but we'll look at other pictures other angles in a second that I'm gonna, it's going to compel me to think that these were original elements and not reclaimed. So this picture is really good as well. You see these at the bottom, I think these are the metal clamps, or the remnants of where they were. These were the hourglass shaped ones. And the entire site, this structure and this structure on the right, are bevel block and original. Maybe these dome elements and features up here maybe restacked reclaimed you see this arch element here there's no arch here but you see the remnants of one of the pieces the arch pieces so what's going on there is that original or reconfigured i don't know this archway i, I it really baffles me because it's cut off at the top and i don't know what that means and and how to reconcile that because on the other arches, they're not like that. And these elements above, which are very similar again to the pieces we saw at the Castle of Shobek and in Jerusalem. I suppose we'll call them decorative because they really don't seem to serve a function. But they're over the gates. They, you know, they could have been for attaching something, maybe a, a shelf, kind of a cornice to keep water off the gate area. You know, an awning. Plausible, right? Uh, but it's just odd that they're con that it's a connected decorative motif across these different sites. And it seems like this one should be higher up, though. Uh, the, where this one is, in relation to its arch, it seems like this one should be higher up. Almost as though the top of this structure was, was damaged and destroyed, and then later people came and, like Legos, put this back together. They, they reclaimed these elements, and by looking at the other structures they could determine where they went and maybe they leveled off the top of this maybe cleaned off the top of this archway and then started stacking more blocks and you know kind of re restacked the structure not very well obviously but it's all maybe that was left but it, it's hard to tell it really is what is original and what is reclaimed at this site because 
I really, especially the column drum segments, like by the arch, for the, if these were secondary, and if the, say the archway was original, then that's a pretty precarious amount of the arch that would have to have been missing for these to be inserted back in, right? So I know the archways are normally the areas that stand up the best to devastations, so this might have been the last remaining freestanding element of the original construction, and all this around could be, you know, secondary repairs and reconfigurings. But let's look at some other angles, and maybe, maybe not, maybe say not. Here again, this is just a nice alternative, alternate angle that shows the different colors in these stones. So some of these, at least this one, I don't, I don't know if there's any more in, at least in this wall. But at least one of these guys is a completely different color than the rest of them. And like one has the square hole in it. I don't think any of the other ones have square holes in them. This one that has the four square indentations or four indentations in it. I don't think any of the other ones have those in it. It's just those are odd. And then different lighting. It does, it's interesting. It's kind of like a, a triangle shape, you know, it's, it's also like a artistic pattern. Just find that interesting. Another angle. This, it looks haphazard, doesn't it? It looks like somebody just found all these little Lego pieces and put this all back together. But around the archways, it's really well done. And the top pieces, again, from, they're familiar from the other sites. All little square hole anomalies peppered throughout it. Uh, and I really don't know. The, the arrow slits, I really don't know. It, it, this is all an original construction man it sure does look like those places in france doesn't it how how haphazard and anomalous those rows were and the, the dimensions of the blocks eerily similar in certain ways right so this is the picture i really want to show you guys because this this is where i'm going to propose that maybe this is all original and none of this is secondary because the ends of these things don't appear to have ever been flat and prepared to be stacked like columns, right? They just, they don't appear to have been, ever been columns in the past. If they were fluted columns, we would still see portions of the fluting around them. Even if they were smooth columns, the ends would have been leveled off. This might be the best example here that we could say, okay, this may have been a column segment because it's so flat. But even still, it's not quite flat. It, that would not stand up straight. And it would not be able to take another stone stacked on top of it. It would have to have some kind of square hole or a, you know, a peg system to mate with the other one. And these stones around here, this is really heavily eroded stuff, right guys? It's almost hard to make out the bevel blocks. You have to step back and see it face on to even notice the bevels. And you can see in some instances, it looks like mortar, but it's really just, I think, where stuff has been impacted. Because in the upper areas, you don't see anything. And what I'm going to propose here is, you see how the bevels of these blocks, I know it's kind of hard to tell because of the light, but the bevels go around these circular elements, right? Each bevel, each block, the bevel contours around the circular pieces. It's, it's not like they found a bunch of bevel blocks, and then carved out concave surfaces to mate up with these other reclaimed column elements. It's as though they wanted these in there, and when they were laying the structure, the bevel blocks were created to go around these. Like this one is a perfect example. It has a bevel around the entire thing. It's heavily eroded, yes, but it's there. The, the original configuration was meant to incorporate these round elements. So that's wild. That's, that's a really hard thing to wrap my mind around. In a lot of other examples and other sites, you see column drum segments used as secondary reclaimed elements. But in this instance, I, I'm going to have to say this is an original intended construction style. I really, I don't know how else to explain it. And going inside, 
I wanted to point this out. Look at this. Dry laid stones. Look how look at the quality here, right guys? The the quality and fitment of these stones is beautiful. It's really well done. The the colors. You look in the back here and you can see the bevel blocks, right? All these are bevel blocks. Odd margins on them. In square little indentation, weird little quirky parts. And you can see how it goes from stone, and then up from here, it's all rubble and mortar. So we're going to have to assume, right, that the ceiling collapsed, and there were elements that were still left, and secondary repairs were made, and they just followed what the original was. That's all I can assume. I'm, I don't see why an original builder who could do all the rest of this stuff would suddenly decide, you know, to go economical and switch to mortar and crude blocks of small size for the top part of their beautiful structure. So, very heavily eroded. Looks really ugly from the outside, but just from the inside, it's a gem. It's just, it's really beautiful, these colors, and the quality of the carving and fitment. And here you go, I found you one more good photo. I think that these bevel blocks were made to go around these. And I think, see, this is a clear bevel line that goes, that follows the contour of these column segments. This isn't mortar, this is stone on stone. And these bevels were made to accommodate these. See, this one has this column segment, if that's what we're calling them. This one has a hole in it. None of these other ones do. None of them seem to have particularly well finished ends. Maybe these do down here, but some of these other ones, they're really roughly shaped. So for stacking and for standing up straight, it'd be really hard for a lot of these, right? And you can see clear bevel blocks here. Other ones are really eroded, but I still think you can make out square anomalies there, here, and then of course all the foliage, right? You pull out some of that foliage, you'd be surprised what you find behind it. So, a lot going on at this sea castle in Sidon, Lebanon. We could probably talk about it and debate it a little bit if you guys want. Maybe these are reclaimed elements, but to me, this is just a quirky building style that seems intended. Oh, how about that? A small filler stone at a corner. And maybe other ones as well. Just, yeah, really wild. Maybe even a big one here. Wow. So... A lot going on here, guys. This is a really wild site, and I could probably spend an hour just rambling about it. So we'll get back to the list, though, and see if we can go through a couple more sites. So again, this is attributed to you know the Crusades, it's Crusader Castle. A lot of these sites we've been looking at have been attributed to Crusaders, and yes. I think that what is going on here is that the Crusaders were going after these sites. They were looking for these sites for their uh, relics or just for the encoded knowledge in the constructions of these sites. But I think in a lot of these cases, what is attributed to the Crusaders is actually just places where the Crusaders occupied and took over. And in Chuck's video, he will mention, I don't know if he mentions in the video specifically, but in his comments, he mentions that the Crusaders were at Haran and in the area around uh, Sagmatar. So the idea that there are Crusaders involved in these sites, I think there might be something to that. I'm not exactly sure what. I don't think anybody does. Graham Hancock might have a few ideas, but we'll leave that to another episode, another time. Maybe we'll get into that with a few of the other guys and collaborate and talk about it and discuss our ideas. But that's kind of the core of this mystery, guys, is the technology involved to make these sites, the knowledge that's encoded, and the cultures that had this knowledge. Who were they? When were they? Uh, how much is traditional Orthodox history, how much of that is accurate? 
and how much isn't. You know, I'm kind of like uh, SGD, Sacred Geometry Decoded. I'm kind of like him. I don't really subscribe to the Orthodox traditional history, but I also definitely don't subscribe to a lot of the more outlandish theories out there. I'm kind of on the fence. I'm kind of in the middle. I try to stay as grounded as possible and only listen to the best researchers like I've mentioned and like I promote. So I kind of keep a hesitant, tepid position on a lot of this stuff, but I think it's because a lot of these mysteries don't have answers and a lot of people saying that they have answers. They're jumping to conclusions a lot of the times. They're taking maybe a nugget of good information and they're running with it and taking it to a outlandish end that doesn't really hold up to scrutiny, but there are mysteries and there really are anomalies here, guys. Now, at this site, we're back in Greece again, near Athens, another part, and I want to talk about this wall for a second because it is really odd, isn't it? Part of it is very finely dressed. It is a bevel block, though, isn't it? Other parts, very crude, almost boulders. But then what's going on with the polygonal elements? Look at this crazy bit of this block. How was that achieved? And the small filler stones to correct the course for the block above? That is insane. Th this entire wall really does not make sense to me, guys. You see irregularities in the rows and the blocks, trapezoidal, polygonal, it's just haphazard. It, you would say that this was reconstructed. Maybe. But the fitment is really good in some of these instances. Especially this larger course. The cruder, maybe a rougher faced course here. This would be really hard to put back together. Or to put together in this tight of a configuration if it was just reclaimed blocks. And you can see it extends over to the right. It, it incorporates, I believe, the bedrock there. I don't believe that's sediment. I believe that's part of the bedrock. A lot of these structures we see, they incorporate the bedrock. So I don't know here. I think this, for the most part, is an original wall, guys. I think at least up to this smoother course here, this is all original below. Maybe these are restacked. This one seems so out of place to me, but perhaps it's original, and they just they weren't worried about it on this at, the, at this site. Very strange, though. Very strange. And that was Keramikios, Athens, Greece. Next, we're going to take a tangent here, guys, and we're probably going to close it up after this because this is kind of an al alternate rabbit hole that might you know take us to a completely different subject, but. The beehive tombs, the uh, they're also called tholos tombs, tholos, T-H-O-L-O-S tombs. These are seen in Greece and in other areas. This one that we're looking at right now is in Crimea, the Royal Kurgan, Kerch, Crimea. These things are wild. The execution, uh, the, the layout, very interesting. These are bevel blocks, both sides, up to the top, but the top goes finely dressed, and the bevels disappear. Like I mentioned early on in the series, that tends to be what happens in a lot of structures, is that they will start out as bevel blocks at the bottom, and as the structure rises, the bevels, the margins, get smaller, they taper, and at the top they become finely dressed, typically. So, very strange execution here, this corbelled arch... That's a, you know, almost, it kind of reminds you of the, the Grand Gallery, doesn't it? Uh, Egyptian execution, and maybe maybe other places like South America and other, other sites we've seen, but just very interesting, eerie, eerily similar. And these bevel blocks seem very well done. They're, they're all pretty uniform. The rows are pretty uniform. This is very symmetrical, very well done, right? And this goes to a niche, and the niche has a stair-step motif above it. I think that's interesting. Let's see if I can zoom in. 
There you go. It's a little, it's a little damaged, but you can see a stair step motif above the doorway. Three stairs. Just interesting, right? The triple motif again. Seems to be a reoccurring numeric hallmark. And that this one is in Crimea. And the, ooh, here's a really good interior photo. I forgot I had this one. Notice the margins, right? The margins are very wide. And even though they are wide, they still seem to be pretty regular. They uh, they hold true over most of the blocks. Some, sometimes they kind of alt, they, they deviate. And here there seems to be almost a second bevel, right? A slip or something. Uh, uh, maybe they went over it a second time, right, with the tool or however this was done. It's very odd that they left them like this. And you see in these other upper elements, they are not present. And here they they get smaller. They're, these are smaller, less, they, they protrude less. They don't really have a very defined shape to them like the other ones do. Very crude. Why didn't they finish those off? They almost taper toward the interior as it goes from the outside to the inside, as well as going from the bottom to the top. They fade. The bevels fade away. Very odd. And you'll see, I think these are nubs, little nubs. And maybe this over here is a nub. But then, you know, what what is a nub at this point? Is it just a small bevel, a, a small remnant of the bevel? And and how do we attribute that? Or how do we reconcile that? Is that just uh, one tiny little spot that the processing missed? I, at that point, I really don't know how else to describe it. So if you Google Tholos Tomb, T-H-O-L-O-S, you'll see a lot of good pictures of what we're talking about here, these beehive tombs. Now, the more famous one is the Treasury of Atreus, which we talked about in the earlier episode. And that is this one here, also called the Tomb of Agamemnon. So we're not sure if these are tombs or not, but the traditional Orthodox history would tell us that they are. In this instance, you can see trapezoidal doorway. You can see it's very faint, but you can see an incised stepped motif around the doorway. And I'm going to say this is a bevel block structure. It's hard to tell if these are, you know, the quality isn't that great on a lot of these pictures. But around here, I'm going to say these are bevel blocks. And if nothing else, these margins on these incised pieces are bevels. So I have to include them just on that point. Now, it's hard to tell a lot of these apart. Um, some of them are very eerily similar, especially that Tomb of Clemenestra and the Treasury of Atreus are almost identical. It's really hard to tell them apart. This one, I, it, is, it appears to be trapezoidal as well, has the same incised motif, the same triangular void above, uh, pretty much the same construction style. So, you know, looking at all these, you could be looking at either one, and hard to tell. And some of these, you'll see, very crude. These are going to be traditionally orthodox. Answer for these is, these are the older ones, and the nicer ones we just saw are the final, later development of the technique and the style. Some of them don't even have the beehive part, the enclosed part. Some of them are just open. And it's interesting how you will see in some photos where only the entryway is nice blocks and around it much smaller cruder blocks. Although these are dry laid it appears. So could be that it was only that the entrance was important and then the rest it could be smaller stones. And this is all contemporary. Could be. But it's just odd that some of them are much cruder. Like this one here, this is odd because half of it appears nice, the other half just very ruinous, almost all rubble. The whole thing otherwise appears to be rubble. 
So maybe this is a tribute or a legacy or an attempt to copy those nicer ones. That's what I would say. And that the nicer ones are the older ones and the cruder ones are the later copies attempts to recreate. That's what I would say. So looking at the interiors of some of these sites, this one is the treasury. Very impressive from bottom to top. This one, very nice, finely dressed stones all the way, top to bottom. The void here above the doorway seems a little crude, but maybe that's just the lighting. And inside the tomb of Clemenestra, it's very nice at the top, but as it goes down, the quality breaks down, even though they're still finely dressed you know, tightly laid stones, dry laid stones. The quality isn't as nice. Perhaps that's just structural. It needs to be nice at the top for strength. And toward the bottom, it doesn't matter. Maybe that's erosion from seep water seepage, maybe. Otherwise, I really don't understand the difference in the quality. Seems odd. And in this instance, we'll notice, hey, this void's been filled in. Now, there are several things we can glean from that. So, by the quality of the blocks and the tightness of the fitment, I'm going to say that it's just as good as the blocks that surround them. So, I can only assume that this infilling was done by the original builders after they completed the structure. I don't believe this is a secondary peoples coming in and filling this in after the fact much later because the blocks would be different, the quality would be different, but this all appears like they finished the structure and for whatever reason after the structure was finished they decided this side needs to be filled in so they filled it in. From the outside it still appears open here. So very interesting. I believe the other one, the Treasury of Atreus, is open all the way through and the other ones they're open all the way through. I believe this is the only one that's closed off like this. But these, these lintel blocks, a lot of these blocks are huge in here as well. So there's a lot, a lot going on in these beehive tombs. We can, we can make that a whole separate episode. And we will close it up with these last couple sites here today guys. Is this getting kind of long here? And with these last two examples, I just want to point out the similarity between them, even though they are not near each other. I pr pronunciation wise, Falau Papau is about as good as I'm going to get, guys. Athens, Greece. This structure, the only bevels are on the corners. How about that? Strange holes in the blocks in some areas. Do we call that damage? I don't know. Do we call that spots where pieces were attached? I don't know. Scaffolding? I don't know. Seems pretty clean otherwise. Not too much damage. But the bevels, they don't appear anywhere else in the wall. Just on the corners. It's very odd that they would take the time to do that. It's nice. It makes the it cleans the structure up and makes it very nice in the corners, you know, it kind of defines the dimensions of the structure. But it's very odd, and you can tell at the top, all this above, all this is additions, all this is secondary, much later. That was Greece, and then this last one here, Turkey, Halicarnassus, the Mendes Gate, the exact same execution bevels at the corners but the other blocks the other parts of the blocks do not have them so I don't know what to uh, what to think about that it seems odd that only the corners have them if this is a uh, production technique a uh, processing technique you would think it would be on the rest of the block not just on the corners. So this is obviously just decoration at this point. 
Very interesting. The dimensions of the blocks themselves, pretty irregular here, right? We'll zoom in on this one. Quality's not too good. But you can see they're kind of irregular. They have wide ones and skinny ones. And the angles aren't exactly 90 degrees. Some of them have kind of trapezoidal shapes to them. It makes it a more solid structure, but it's very hard to put the thing together without taking the time for each block to fit each one. And you can see repair mortar. The structure probably suffered some kind of cataclysm or devastation, destruction. So the gate portion more than likely was the strongest portion of the wall or the structure. So this is what was able to withstand the devastations. And with this kind of crack, this, this gap that was filled, it reminds me a lot of the uh, devastation or the uh, cataclysm damage we were proposing over there in Greece at the uh, Arcadian Gate. From the way it looks, it looks like some kind of earthquake damage, a separation of the structure by shaking. That's the only thing I can think of. And a few other people thought the same thing. So, two different sites with the exact same execution. Very interesting to me. A lot of the sites we talk about in this series are located in Greece and Turkey. And around the Mediterranean and around that area. So, the reason for that more than likely is that this was a central focal point a hub of the civilization, of their culture. And do we, you know, do we uh, believe 100% of the Orthodox history? Do we believe 0% of it? You know, I think the truth is somewhere in between. And I just think we have to keep an open mind and take into account all the information we can. We cannot rule out any information, however outlandish. We have to take it all in and sort through it filter through it, decide what fits, what sticks, what holds up to scrutiny. And anything that doesn't, we just have to, we have to, we have to throw it out. And like Chuck mentioned in one of his other videos, and I like to think about, think about it this way as well, is that if we just follow the evidence, the story will unfold. And there's really no need to be sensationalists or run to outlandish ends with you know, maybe our little nuggets of, of truth. I think if we just follow the truth and follow the evidence, the story that unfolds is, is just, just equally as, as mysterious and, and fascinating. So, no need for invoking anything too crazy at this point, but there are legitimate mysteries and no one seems to be explaining them, so that's why we're doing it. So, thank you guys again for hanging out with me today, and we will talk to you next time.